Welcome to Brick Vault. In this video, we're taking a closer look at these two Lego creations, the Micro Millennium Falcon and the Outrider. The two Karelian ships hold a special place in the Star Wars universe and for me personally. The Falcon in many ways is as much of a character in the films as the other actors you see on the screen. She breaks down at crucial moments, kicks into gear at the last second, and simply pulls off stunts that no other ship can do time and time again. In a lot of ways, I hold a stronger emotional connection to this steadfast spaceship from a galaxy far, far away than many of its occupants throughout the years. As for the Outrider, most of its antics take place in the extended universe. It was first made popular in 1996 from the game Shadows of the Empire, and the Outrider quickly became a fan favorite. Its design is both unique and still well grounded in a similar Karelian style to the Falcon. The pilot Dash Rendar has a chip on his shoulder just like Han did, uh, and some have even said he's kind of like a Han 2.0. From what I remember, the Outrider was just a really fun ship to fly around in and have space battles with. So, before I go any further into the details of these builds, I'd first like to say that the instructions for the models can be found at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. With each purchase, you get to the PDF step-by-step instructions as well as a completed digital parts list to upload online for easy ordering of the pieces. Buying from our web store is a great way to help support us here at the channel and the designers we work with. This week, interestingly enough, the two mocks uh, were designed by me. Yep, it's been a while since I posted any of my own builds, but these two designs are the first part of a larger network of scaled micro builds that I've been working on for quite some time. So more on that in a second, but first I'd like to give a special thank Thanks to the designers who helped inspire these builds for me, that would be Miro Dudas, Risk Jockey, and Tony Moronis. At the beginning of this year, I borrowed Miro's Falcon at the Bricks LA event. He then showed me the design he based his build off of, which was this guy's, that's Risk Jockey. And then Tony Moronis's Falcon design is the earliest iteration I can see the ship built at this scale. I did a video a while back that featured a few variations of this Falcon, which was really fun to make. And later, after finalizing the designs for the Rebel fleet, I decided to build something that scaled a bit more accurately to the small ships that I made. And so just like our larger minifig scale creations we have in the web store, I decided to follow the same concept down to the micro level, so all the ships would look accurate next to each other, give or take half a stud or so when it comes to these micro builds. At the moment of making this video, the Rebel Fleet is not yet available in the web store, still working on the Empire designs to finish off both fleets at the same time. But let's jump into the models now, a little closer to the actual models this episode is about. There are a few details on the Falcon I think worth taking a closer look at. The cockpit and access tunnel have a somewhat unique attachment using a robot body piece similar to that of an astromech, and the joint at the elbow would normally be loose here with these kinds of parts, but I managed to tighten it up. Also towards the center of the body right here at the base of the tunnel, there is a single slope piece held in with just tension alone. I know it's not totally legal, but it's actually quite solid. I'll get back to the front detailing in a moment, but let's check out the back first because it's got some of the strangest bit of building. Ever since the second wave of the Jurassic World sets, I knew I needed to use those new zip line pieces. Not gonna lie, this was a bit of a pain to get lined up with the correct amount of tension, but I'm pretty happy with how the final result turned out. Ultimately, I was driven to add this because the flat line on the back of the bird just didn't work for me with the flat plates and the zip lines were 
added as a way to keep that round shape, or at least the suggestion of roundness is still sort of there. They are technically a little loose, but once fitted properly, they keep their place really well. In the instructions, I have a bit more of an in-depth look as to how to properly add them, and the same goes for that little slope piece that's held in with just tension. The back also has detailing for the heat exhaust vents, as well as the fuel drive pressure stabilizers, being the little cheese wedge pieces, and moving up the model, the airlocks slash arms that lead up to them are admittedly just a bit wide on a proportional level, but I liked the look of the double inverted slope points just pushing out a bit, so I ended up deciding to keep them, and if I revisit this model in the future, this may be worth examining again, but let me know what you think. Here is a closer look now at the top turret as well as the radar dish or sensor retina. These details remain the same as previous iterations, and much of the side details that we have are made up of one by one clips as well as flat silver round plates. Now when it comes to the handling of the model, it's a pretty solid build. Micro or smaller builds like this aren't necessarily always going to be strong. This is kind of what the bottom looks like. There's some basic builds for landing gear, which you can take off if you like. But outside of that, the actual handling part of the model feels pretty solid. I don't feel myself handling this thing delicately. You can hold it up from pretty much all of its extremities, though I wouldn't recommend holding it up by that little cockpit tunnel. Also, the landing gear, you know, it can fall off. It's sort of something that I would suggest taking off if you really feel like like swooshing this thing around. And outside of that, this model is very, very casual and I would say just as swooshable as any playset you could think of. Also, here's the Falcon without its landing gear, which looks a little bit sleeker, a little bit smoother. I think this is what people are normally used to seeing the Falcon as. And this is the state of the model that I would say is primed for actually swooshing around. Okay, so that is the Falcon. Now let's take a closer look at the Outrider. It was built a while ago and went through a few minor changes here and there over the past several months but proportionally it remains pretty much the same as the original design that first came out. There are several different versions of the ship as rendered by many artists over the years. It had a certain look in the games and the YT-2400 light freighter did make its way into the Rebels show with somewhat of a different look from the rest. I took a little bit of a creative liberty with how I wanted the ship to look based on a lot of these different designs but kept the size dimensions of the ship exact as described within universe. There is some basic greebling in the front of the ship and the airlock protrudes off the port side just a bit. As for the rear thrusters, I like the curved slopes creating an even shape in the back and from the top down view you can see I tried to have the wing plates kind of smooth out its transition back into the rest of the body. Normally the cockpit tube is just that, it's a tube, but I wasn't happy with any of the cylindrical shapes I was coming up with so if there is a second visit to this model here is probably where I would start. Ultimately I'm happy with how durable this part of the build turned out and now we have our slow final zoom out from the top of the turret. Here you can kind of get that general layer cake shape of the Outrider. That's sort of the technique or the building technique I decided to go with and personally this was my favorite part of the ship to put together. Some of the plates you see also just as an anecdote are built in old gray but I believe I made the parts list the standard light bluish gray pieces which looks a little better. I'm pretty sure I just found the parts in my old bin and built the Outrider quite a while back. As for the handling of this ship, it is very solid, though I would say some of the landing gear does like to pop off, just like the Falcon. They are the smallest extremities, but you can really shake this thing around. There is no weak point of this ship at all, minus, of course, the extremities like I just said. You can take the thruster pieces out with just one stud, so I guess don't pick it up by the blue. And outside of that, this build is about as strong as it gets. Now here is the Outrider with no landing gear attached. I like the look of the shape at sort of that eye level view where you can get sort of the profile from the front. Gives you an idea of how wide it is in the center and the thinness of the arms that come out towards the cockpit. Just like the Falcon, it's definitely swooshable. And here are the two Karelian freighters together. They were a lot of fun to make. I'd say these models, well, the Falcon at least is a bit more on the advanced side of building. The part count is relatively low still, but certain areas were 
require just a little bit of finesse to get the details just right. Also, I think I forgot to mention this earlier, but I am going to be making the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon in this size. So if you do end up making a purchase for the instructions, you'll just get automatically updated with that new model. If you indeed are interested in building these creations yourself, you can visit our web store, brickvault.toys, once again, linked in the description below. And if you have stuck around in the video this long, thanks a lot, first of all, and let me know what kind of creations you'd like to see us make in the future. And if you enjoy our content, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.